Person, you know, they were able to go to Henry Edward Huntington and, and organize a way to start uh, buying the land as the U.S. Shipping Board then provided the loans. Actually, Henry E. Huntington will buy uh, the entire Hilton Village after the war to ensure it maintains itself as a community. And, you know, we are very fortunate today uh, to have, uh, of course, Homer Ferguson was the keynote speaker, and so we now are very fortunate to have Vice President of Quality for Newport News Shipbuilding, Ron Murray, to say a few words. Thank you, John. I guess I'll say good evening. Today is a special day, not only for Hilton Village, a very special place, but for the greater Newport News community and the more than 22,000 shipbuilders of Newport News Shipbuilding who I am honored to represent today. The shipyard and this community go way back and we are proud to be your neighbors and your friends. Hilton Village has such a wonderful story to tell. But first, I would like to thank Mrs. Jackie Legg and the Hilton Village Centennial Committee for all their hard work, their research, and their planning that brought us together to remember and celebrate in such a fitting way. I'm sure that by now, many of you have heard the story of Homer L. Ferguson, one of our most notable shipyard presidents who led the charge, donated the land, to ultimately build this community. I'll take just a few minutes of your time to share the Ron Murray Reader's Digest version. In the early 1900s, when it became clear that World War I would be more than a European war, our military needed ships that only Newport News shipbuilding could build. That also meant more shipbuilders. Mr. Ferguson not only had a vision for building ships, but he had a vision for Newport News. He knew that to find the best shipbuilders to build the greatest ships in the world, he needed to offer good paying jobs, a vibrant community, and quality housing. But Newport News was experiencing a severe housing shortage. The shipyard began to grow beyond what Newport News could offer, leading to room sharing, tent cities, and temporary structures. It was no way for anyone to live, and Mr. Ferguson set off to do something about it. In January of 1918, he stood before a Senate committee and asked the government to help to build these houses. He testified that Newport News could build no more ships until proper housing was made available for shipyard workers. Under the direction of Congress, the U.S. Shipping Board and Emergency Fleet Corporation agreed to underwrite the project. This is how Hilton Village came to be. The place chosen to bring Ferguson's vision to reality was a heavily wooded, 200-acre piece of property known as the Darling Tract. The only development on this land was an old homestead known as Hilton. Here, the shipyard proposed to build not only 500 houses, but a town complete with churches, schools, and businesses for skilled shipyard workers. By the fall of 1918, the first families were moving in and by the spring of 1919, nearly all of the houses were built. But Hilton Village was more than a collection of structures. It was a symbol of American ingenuity and pride. I cannot emphasize enough the importance this community had to Newport News Shipbuilding's success. Hilton Village is as much a part of Newport News Shipbuilding's story as we are a part of yours. This community helped us recruit and support thousands of skilled workers providing the stable workforce that we desperately needed 100 years ago. And that stability helped build the foundation on which our company has grown over the last 132 years. Today, Hilton Village continues to thrive as a vibrant, warm, and enterprising community. And it is still home to many of our shipbuilders. I know firsthand what a great place it is to raise a family because I'm proud to call myself a Hilton resident 
as my family lives just a few streets away from Hilton Village, where my wife and I, Mary, and our, raised our two beautiful daughters. As I close, I once again would like to thank the Centennial Committee for inviting me to be a part of this event. As our country's first public plan community, Hilton is a national treasure that has stood the test of time. I have no doubt that the patriotism and sense of purpose that led to its establishment will continue to ensure its success for many centuries to come. With that, I'd like to invite the Hilton Village historian Chuck Webb to join me at the podium.